folks, welcome once again to Prophecy Update, where we look at current events in the light of Bible prophecy. My name is Bob Mitchell, I will be with you for the next few minutes. Hello friends, if you have not seen part one of this two-part presentation, please watch that first as it lays the groundwork for what follows here in part two. We are watching very closely the build-up of the Iranian and Russian presence in the Middle East, particularly around Syria and Iraq, and just to the north of Israel's Syrian border. These events have profound prophetic implications, and while the tension may or may not diminish in the coming days, we must take note that the Bible speaks of a coming invasion of Israel involving Iran, Turkey and modern-day Russia, as well as others, that will result in the destruction of those invading forces on Israel's northern mountains of Samaria. Again, I ask you please to watch part one of this report. I'll leave a link below this video. This is part two, as we look at the present build-up to the possibility of such a fulfilment of the Ezekiel 38-39 prophecy. This was given over two and a half thousand years ago for the end times. It was made when Russia was just a land of nomadic tribes and not the major world power it is today. So please do not dismiss out of hand what is happening today as it relates to Bible prophecy for these very days. The Bible is 100% accurate in its predictions and it has yet to be disproved on any point. So we do well to read its words and take note of its warnings for these are indeed the end times. Russian air crews in Syria are under new orders to respond directly and immediately to Iranian and Syrian demands for air bombardments without any confirmation from the high commands in Latikia or Moscow. This has enormously empowered the Syrian and Hezbollah officers on the ground for taking the war into their own hands. It has led directly to Russian planes suddenly bombing a pro-U.S. Syrian force in the Deir Ez Zawa province of eastern Syria on Saturday, September the 16th. Following these attempts to prevent Iranian militias from joining in Syria and Iraq, U.S. military forces are now evacuating a base in the region, thus allowing the Iranians to have control in the region. Although U.S. President Donald Trump spoke earlier against Iran, U.S. special forces evacuated their military base in southeastern Syria, allowing Iranian militias to take control of that very region. This decision by the Americans to leave the al zakaf base, which sits on the border between Syria and Iraq, brings an end to the United States' effort to prevent Iranian militias from settling in the region. Even earlier, U.S. forces failed to prevent Assad's military and Hezbollah from crossing the Euphrates River to the east with the help of a Russian-backed pontoon bridge. Also, as reported last week by Jerusalem Online, Russia and the United States rejected Israel's request to forbid Iranian militia to settle closer than 37 miles from Israel's border. Instead, they agreed that the Iranian militia could be as close as three miles away from Israel. Iran's effort to strengthen its influence in the Middle East continues, especially in Syria and Lebanon. Washington clearly has no practical plans for countering the assertive Russian-Iranian advances in Syria and the rest of the region. Their ruthlessness was demonstrated on Saturday, the September the 16th, by a Russian bombardment of the US-backed Kurdish-led SDF near Deir Ez-Zawa, 
Moscow was telling Washington that the US would not be permitted to impede the Syrian Hezbollah initiative for the capture of areas east of the Euphrates, and Russia said it was ready to confront US-backed forces on the ground if they got in the way, while ruling a clash in the air. The Kremlin was also putting Washington on notice that after investing massive military and financial resources in Syria, it had no intention to let pro-American forces share in the kudos of the final victory over the Islamic State in Syria, which belonged solely to the Russian-Syrian-Iranian-Hezbollah war alliance. The US Senate then approved further sanctions against Russia and Iran and North Korea by a vote of 98 votes to two. Senator John McCain said America needs to send a strong message to Vladimir Putin and any other aggressor that we will not tolerate attacks on American democracy. It's time, he said, to respond to Russia's attack on American democracy with strength, resolve, with common purpose and with action. But for now, the Russian maneuver is heading for a successful outcome, and we can only watch and wonder as ancient prophecies concerning the coming battle in the Middle East continue to take shape at an alarming rate. These prophecies will find their fulfillment in the coming days. I believe Russia and her allies are after the oil in the Middle East, which is why the prophecies speak of this northern invasion coming down into Israel and the Gulf states and Egypt. They're after the oil, friends. Make no mistake about that. What you are seeing in the Middle East at the moment is the jigsaw pieces of end-time Bible prophecy falling into place. And you need to know Jesus Christ in these coming days and to be aware of what is taking place in Bible prophecy. Thanks for watching and God bless. What is the amazing link between the woman and the dragon of Revelation 12, the city of Jerusalem and the year 2017? Did the blood moons of 1493-94, and 2014-50 really have any prophetic significance? My new book, The Blood Moon's Prophecy, Jerusalem and 2017, may provide you with some shocking answers to these questions. This book of 194 pages and illustrations will shock many people. Following on from my best-selling book, Antichrist, the Vatican and the Great Deception, we further lift the curtain on amazing prophetic events that are taking place today as Israel prepares to build the Third Temple. Events about which many Christians are totally unaware. Why did the revived Jewish Sanhedrin visit Turkey to discuss the rebuilding of the temple, its future location and the coming of the Messiah? Amazingly, the Sanhedrin likened the Islamic Messiah figure, the Mahdi, to their idea of the Jewish Messiah, whose appearance they say is imminent. Did you know the architectural plans for the temple have recently been prepared? The priests are already in training. The instruments have been created ready for their use in the coming temple rituals. But where is the Ark of the Covenant? Did the prophet Jeremiah hide it 
two and a half thousand years ago and in recent years has its location been discovered and kept secret until the temple is built however the prophets warned us antichrist will come in the last days and desecrate a newly built temple in Jerusalem this book also reveals the area from which many of the church fathers believed Antichrist will arise just how close are we to Antichrist's appearance and the return of Jesus Christ Israel's true Messiah the building of the temple in Jerusalem and the arrival of the Antichrist may be much closer than many believe. Who knows what the coming days will bring? Time is short, my friends. All history will finally come together with the fulfillment of the ultimate prophecy, the return of the Messiah, Yeshua. So heads up, watch the Middle East, because that is where it will all come to pass in the days and the years ahead. God bless you.